Look at this console. It runs so cool after applying the underfolding mod I did in my last video. Let's kill this tasty pig. Tasty. Wait, what the hell just happened? Ah, oh, fart! Underfolding is supposed to prevent yellow light of death by reducing the RSX temperature. Why do I still get yellow light of death? In this video, we are going to find out what's going on. As you all know, the only way to find out the reason is to use syscon. Before you can check the syscon error log, we always need to go through this painful tear down. Thanks everyone for correcting my English. I really appreciate it. My lousy English is slowly improving thanks to you guys. Please feel free to point out any more mistakes. As we tear down the console, I really hope we get Yellow Light of Death 102. Because we can fix 102 using this Felix Tantalizer. And where did I get the Felix Tantalizer? Of course by doing SMD soldering. Wetting the PCB. Putting the components. Blowing hot air. Here we go. We have one tasty Felix tantalizer ready. Oh, you don't know how to do soldering? Don't worry. You can use PCBWay assembly surface. With PCBWay, just a few clicks, you have your own PCB. If you use the assembly surface, you get the complete Felix tantalizer. Upload your own design and print out your own PCB. Okay, we finally have access to the syscon connections. Do some simple soldering and connect this thing to your PC. Then go to your computer and pretend to be a hacker. Hack into the PS3 and extract the top secret syscon error log. What? We have 101 and 104? Wait a minute, it's not a complete log. Press enter to suck down more errors. Ah, uh, so in the end, we still get 3034. Which basically means your R6 is dead. Anyhow, let's try turning on the console using the power switch command. Let me also try to press down the R6. If it's a BJ problem, we might be able to turn on the console. Okay, it's not a BJ problem. If it's not the BJ problem, that means it's the underfield problem. Look, we get the 3034 error. Okay, let's shut down the console. Should I use the power switch command again? Hmm, it seems not. Maybe the shutdown command. Yes, it is. With the console shut down, we will proceed to the underfield testing. First, unplug the fan from the PCB. Then turn the PCB upside down. Look at this beautiful R6. This is the silicon die in the center. And underneath this silicon, we have the underfield protecting the balls. The R6 is covered with nasty thermal paste applied by me. Before we can do the underfield testing, we need to clean it first. Now it's shining clean. Let's attach a thermal couple to it. Let's also get the thermal camera ready so that we can cross-check the readings. Plug the camera into your smartphone. Launch the app that came with the camera. Let's see, where's the RS6? Found it! It's over here! Look at my finger! It's freezing cold! Now we have both the thermal couple and camera ready. Let's blow hot air to the underfield. I will simply follow the PS3 Bible written by the PS3 God, RIP Felix. Set the hot air temperature to 150, so that we can heat the underfield to around 100 degrees Celsius. After blowing hot air, the reading jumps to 70. And now it's 90. But that reading is just measuring the air temperature, not the actual underfield temperature. So we will continue blowing hot air. It's time to use our thermal camera to double check the temperature. I got only around 60 degrees Celsius at the center of the R6. That means we need to continue heating it up. After almost one and a half minute, I think it should be done. Look at the temperature reading, it drops so fast. And we'll wait for it to cool down before we put everything back for testing. Just to be clear, this is not a BJ we flow. 
It doesn't even get close to the 250 degrees Celsius needed to melt the lead free soda balls. I'm just applying localized heat to the underfill, trying to confirm if the underfill is causing the problem. Now we have the bare minimum ready. Let's attach a power supply and try to turn on the console. Just to be safe, let me also attach the syscon reader so that we can check the errors easily. As usual, hack into the PS3. And we will use the syscon command power switch to turn on the console. I can see the hard disk blinking. Oh no, no way. We have the screen and we somehow got into the XMB menu. I know some of you might say it's fixed, but it's not. It means we have the notorious 90 nanometer RSX underfield problem. Let's shut down the console and put everything back together before it starts to overheat. The RSX underfield problem has caused lots of nasty myths in the PS3 community. It misled people into thinking that reflowing the RSX is the fix to Yellow Light of Death. And it also created a shady business opportunity where people rebore the same 40 90 nanometer RSX and claim it as a fix. So what we're going to do next is to repaste this RSX and test how long it can last. To properly test it, I'm going to clean up all the ugly old thermal paste I applied last time when I did the underfolding mod. Once the IHS is shiny and clean, we will move on to clean the RSX. Everything is clean. Let's apply the new thermal paste. Now we'll put the PCB back to the IHS and then put everything back. Finally, it's almost done. Let's have a quick test to make sure we didn't mess up anything. Great, the console is running fine. Ah, wait. I think I forgot about the hard disk. So let's turn it off and plug the hard disk in. Ah, oh, we have another problem. I forgot to plug in the CMOS battery. It would be annoying to set the clock every time I turn on the console. So we have no choice but to go through the painful teardown again. But before that, let's do the most important thing when your console is still running. That is to extract the root key for this console. This root key is very useful when you need to unlock your hard disk and extract the data without the console. Now we have the root key stored in this USB drive. Let's move on to the CMOS battery. High, High speed, speed tear down. down! Finally, we have access to the CMOS battery. Let's plug it in. Now the battery is connected. We need to put everything back again. Let's put a label to remind myself this console is dying. Finally, let's test it to see how long it can survive. Turn on the console using my beautiful yellow controller. Waiting for the screen to show up. Yes, we have the screen. Once we are in the XMB menu, check the total playtime using Webman. It's 51 days, 21 hours, 9 minutes, and 29 seconds. Then we will launch Minecraft and continue cooking the pig. Let me also start the timer to see how long this console can survive. Damn, I forgot which save file is the correct one, because I had been testing with tons of save files. Okay, not this one. So I keep trying all the save files I have, looking for the one with a pig. It takes forever to load a game with my slow hard disk. Almost 4 minutes in, and we are still looking for the save file. 
How come all the save files are empty? Alright, this is the last save file. And here we go, the yellow light of death. This console survived for a whopping 5 minutes. That's why I said being able to turn it on doesn't mean it's fixed. Especially when you have syscon error 3034. It's a ticking time bomb that could die at any moment. Before we end the video, let's listen to this sound one more time. Beautiful. So, what now? Should you still underfold your PS3? Of course, yes. Why not? Your console runs way cooler after underfolding. Just be prepared that underfolding won't magically fix the yellow light of death. You can still get yellow light of death just like I did. I also once thought underfolding was the ultimate mod, and Frankenstein mod is no longer necessary. But it turns out, Frankenstein mod is still the only way to save your console from the 90nm RSX curse. So it seems like I have no choice but to play with metallic balls again for the nasty Frankenstein mod. Last but not least, I want to thank the biggest sponsor of this channel, Dino6080, Squid World 15, Technique Killer, Gaite Roma, Mega Macedonian Boy, Jaro6985. Oh, you are wondering what this illegal USB hub is about? I tried selling on eBay and I got banned after shipping out the item. Anyhow, I will properly invest all these donations to PlayStation 500 Index Fund, aka PS500. Stay safe and see you next time.